One of the arguments that Federer fans often bring up is the slowing down of court speeds. According to them, at some point in the decade of 2000s, the courts were deliberately slowed down to allow for longer rallies and make tennis more exciting for the fans, with the end goal of generating bigger viewership and revenues. Federer fans claim that this change was detrimental to attacking-minded, serve-and-volley style players like Federer, and beneficial to baseliners like Djokovic, Nadal and Murray. But did courts really slow down or is this just another myth? That is the question we are going to answer in this video. We are going to analyze court speeds from 2003 to present time and compare the speeds between Federer and Djokovic eras. We will also discuss the theory of surface homogenization. And finally, at the very end we will touch on some other topics related to court speeds that I will cover in upcoming videos. Let's begin. Before we get into the stats, a quick disclaimer. All data in this video came from ultimatetennisstatistics.com. The court speeds on that site were not measured using court pace rating, or CPR, which is the International Tennis Federation standard. The reason why I didn't use CPR is because there is very little of that data available, so it would be impossible to make a comprehensive analysis. Ok, let's dive into the stats. We begin with Grand Slam court speeds since 2003 until present time. These are the court speeds at Australian Open in the last 20 years. Federer era is in red and Djokovic era in blue. Even with the naked eye, you can see that Djokovic era is significantly faster. In fact, Djokovic era tournaments were faster, on average, by a whopping 16 points. Also notice that the fastest Australian Open was 2019, when Djokovic demolished Nadal in the final. And the second fastest was 2016, when Djokovic played maybe the most dominant match ever against Federer in the semis. We will take a closer look at the head-to-head -head matchups in another video. Next we have Roland Garros. And once again we see that the courts became faster in the Djokovic era. Notice that the 2020 tournament, which took place in November and was played in much colder weather than other French Opens, was the slowest in the last 15 years. Wimbledon grass has always been the fastest among Grand Slam surfaces. And this is the slam that is most often brought up in the court speed discussions. But as you can see, the courts did not slow down over time. On average, they became faster. It's also worth noting that Federer did not win any of the three fastest events. Nadal won in 2010 and Djokovic won in 2014 and 2015, both times beating Federer in the finals. This is completely opposite to the popular narrative that Djokovic bested Federer in Wimbledon because of slower surface. We will examine how court speeds influence head-to-head -head matchups among the big three in another video. How about US Open? It's not as easy to judge with the naked eye. That's because, on average, the courts maintained the same speed in both eras. However, notice that most of the fastest events happened in the Djokovic era. What brings down the average in the Djokovic era are 2011 and 2016 tournaments, which were the slowest in the entire timeline. To summarize what we have seen so far, in the Djokovic era, courts became faster in Australia, Roland Garros and Wimbledon, and they stayed the same at the US Open. Djokovic era has had the 10 fastest Australian Opens, 5 out of 7 French Opens, 6 out of 8 Wimbledons and 4 out of 6 fastest US Opens. In conclusion, the courts at Grand Slams did not slow down, as is often claimed. They have become faster. Let's check out Masters 1000 tournaments. The red bars represent average court speeds in Federer's era and the blue bars the Djokovic era. As you can see, Indian Wells, Cincinnati and Paris courts all slowed down slightly. Miami remained the same and the other five Masters got faster. When all nine Masters tournaments are considered, the courts, on average, became faster. The claim that courts slowed down is once again disproven. There is another popular theory that's been around for a long time. Surface homogenization. What is that? Surface homogenization is the idea that the three different surfaces, clay, hard courts and grass, became more similar in speed than they used to be. In other words, many people believe that the differences in speeds between the three surfaces diminished over time, 
and that today all three surfaces have almost the same speed. Let's see if that is true. In Federer's era, the average speed of clay courts in Roland Garros was 36, and the average speed of the two hardcourt slams was 56. So on average, the hardcourts were faster than the clay courts by 20 points. Average speed of Wimbledon grass in Federer's era was 76, 20 points faster than hardcourts. Therefore, in Federer's era, the differences in speed between the surfaces are in increments of 20 points. If surfaces became more similar in the Djokovic era, we would expect these differences to become smaller. Let's see if that happened. In the Djokovic era, the average speed of clay courts is 42, and the average speed of hard courts is 63, a 21 point difference, while the average speed of grass courts is 80, a 17 point increment. Have the courts become more similar in speed? Not at all. The differences between the three surfaces have remained almost the same. Therefore, surface homogenization theory is also wrong. Contrary to widespread belief that surfaces have become slower and more similar to each other, evidence shows that surfaces have become faster and equally different. The narrative that Feather stopped winning because of slowing down of court speeds is not true. It's just another myth. If you are interested in this subject, I highly recommend Musaba Bid's article about the change that Wimbledon made to their grass and how that change impacted the game. One of the key points in the article is the following quote. There is of course a widely held perception that Wimbledon has been constantly slowing down the courts over the years. But that's not true. The one change that did happen was in 2001. There is no evidence whatsoever to suggest there has been any modification since then." End quote. In other words, the only change in Wimbledon surface took place before Feather won his first Wimbledon title, which proves that Roger did not stop winning because of slower court speeds. With that, we can cross off the fourth excuse from our list, and next is the conclusion of this series. However, there are other questions regarding court speeds and Federer Djokovic rivalry that we have not yet answered. I will make another video where we will analyze the effects of court speeds on their performance and their head to head matches. What other videos would you like to see about court speeds? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching and I will talk to you soon.